Well, let's talk a little bit about some of, of uh, Dr. Levine's research on um, getting into that, starting into that late middle age, age 50. And this was a, a very, he calls it one of the most cited or looked, viewed at, I guess, viewed on their on the website uh, in the journal circulation studies of all time. Uh, and rightly so. I think it's a, a pretty astounding study. Uh, it was a two-year intervention trial where he took 50-year-olds, him and his colleagues took 50-year-olds that were otherwise healthy but sedentary. I would argue that's not healthy if they're sedentary. It is uh, as a, is a disease, but they don't have any other identified diseases like cardiovascular disease or hypertension, for example. But they had been sedentary. And um, he, he, he put them on a two-year exercise protocol, which maybe you can discuss in a minute, that was pretty intense. And they looked at the structure of their heart um, before starting this protocol. And then two years after this exercise protocol, they looked at their hearts again and found that in many aspects, like the, the cardiac compliance and a variety of different parameters that they looked at, the um, size of the heart and the stiffness, right, the stretchiness of the heart, in in many aspects, had reversed in terms of of their aging. In fact, it was comparable. Their hearts were comparable to looking more like thirty year olds. So they had essentially started this program, and they they had these fifty year old looking hearts, and with respect to the the size and the compliance. And then after this two-year exercise protocol had reversed 20 years of cardiac aging, which is pretty astonishing and inspirational in many respects. So the protocol wasn't necessarily easy, though. It wasn't at all. It was, I think it wasn't easy. It was simple. And I think something that everybody can kind of work up to and use as kind of a framework for how to structure their training. So yeah, as you mentioned, this was a two-year study, which again, like if anybody's familiar with exercise physiology research, like doing a two year exercise intervention is pretty incredible to get those participants to adhere to that regimen. Um, I can't remember how many participants were in that study that right now, but um, I think it was, you know, uh, somewhere around 200 maybe, but they had a pretty, pretty decent number of participants. Um, but it involved a two year commitment and they didn't start them out right away doing everything that they were doing at the end, but they scaled up their exercise gradually throughout the two years. By year one, they were kind of, you know, reaching their peak exercise and then they maintained them for the second year. And so what this involved was eventually doing about five to six hours of aerobic exercise, or I guess it was total training per week was kind of five to six hours. And what that involved was one of one Norwegian four by four session. They actually, at one point in the study, just before the one year mark, were doing two Norwegian four by four interval training sessions per week. After the year, they dropped it down to just one for the maintenance phase. So one Norwegian four by four interval training session per week. They did one session per week that was an hour or longer of their base pace. So we could refer to that as low to moderate intensity exercise, zone two training, but it was like a one hour longer base pace session. And that could be just a bike, a run, a walk, a hike, something like that. And then they did another 30 minute base pace session per week. So another zone two exercise training session per week. They also did a very light recovery day after all of their interval training sessions. So the day after their Norwegian 4x4, they did a light active recovery day. And then they did two resistance training exercise sessions per week. So they were doing four aerobic training sessions, two resistance exercise training sessions for the protocol. And again, they scaled up to that. So this wasn't, we're doing a four by four all at once, but they progressively, you know, added that for the first year, by the end of the second year, they were maintaining that. So they, you know, for two years did about five to six hours of exercise. And like you mentioned, they reversed their certain aspects of their cardiovascular structure by, you know, an estimated 20 years, which is pretty astounding. So yeah, not an, not an easy protocol, but certainly not something like a high level elite endurance athlete is doing. So it's something that everybody I think could do. And these were people who were 50, 60 years old. Right. It's, it's doable. Mm. And I, I'd be curious to know how many of those people continue to maintain that after the city was over, knowing they reversed their their heart aging in, in some in terms of the structural aging of their heart by almost, you know, about 20 years. I, I feel like that would be very motivating you know, for any 50 or 60 year old to go, wow, I should keep this up. This is like, I want to, you know, I want I want my heart to stay like a 30 year old. Right. I mean, that yeah. for me, it would for it, sure. It would be cool to see a follow up study. It would also just be cool to see if they didn't say they didn't maintain that training, they just totally stopped. How long those benefits kind of lasted? I think that would be interesting, too. And if um, I know Dr. Levine and them had follow-up studies on some of the exercise training, but it would be interesting to see for that one because I'm sure you can maintain some of those benefits for a few years, but 
the bed rest training study or just some of the studies on detraining, you see like kind of once you stop, it's a very steep slope down back to where you were. Right. It's, it's especially with respect to your cardiorespiratory fitness. Right? Right. Yeah. Um, well, the, a lot of this research, so the this this intervention study, you know, we're talking about the master's athletes looking at um, identifying, you know, I called it the dose, but it's it, it really is in terms of frequency, how many days a week you have to work out to kind of help maintain that youthful cardiac structure has led Dr. Levine to have what he calls his prescription for life with respect to exercise. He does add a little bit of resistance training into that prescription for life. Maybe we can talk a little bit about that and then talk about our own sort of our prescription for life, like what our protocols are. His prescription for life was honestly one of, I think, my favorite uh, takeaways from that episode because it was something that I felt was reasonable for everybody. It's a lot more exercise than probably most people are doing, but not something that everyone couldn't work up to at some point. And so his prescription for life was very similar to kind of that two-year training study that he cited. He cited the sweet spot of four to five days per week of aerobic exercise or five to six hours per week of training. That seems to be kind of the sweet spot. Performing interval training once per week. And, you know, while in that study, they used the Norwegian 4x4, you know, you could do any type of intervals. We just mentioned a few other protocols, the 10 by one the Tabata. But really, just, just do high, some type of high-intensity interval training uh, once per week. After every high-intensity interval training session, take a light recovery day. Levine definitely stressed the importance of recovery, not only just for from a muscular perspective and your, you know, your autonomic nervous system, but the cardiac and cardiovascular system also needs to recover. You know, when you stress it with a high heart rate, you do increase some markers of like cardiac damage and those also need time to recover. So if you're doing interval workout the next day, you know, doing 30 or more, maybe minutes of very light activity, that's also kind of part of his prescription. His bit one hour or longer base pay session per week was definitely kind of a foundation of his prescription. And then the two or more resistance training session exercises per week, which, you know, this is a very, very practical approach. And I think most people could, you know, maybe you should just take this and paste it up on your wall and use that to guide your training every week. I think if most people did that, they would be certainly in a, a good place, not only to, I think, age better, but the way I see it, I mean, I look at Levine's prescription for life and mirrors a lot of like what I do for my weekly training. I mean, the way I structure kind of my training, I do, I have one long run for every single week. I do probably two easy zone two exercise sessions. I do one high intensity interval session. And then um, I try to strength train twice per week. So I really follow Levine's prescription for life. I just kind of scale it up to meet the volume that I'm in seeking per week. And so I'm sure you, Rhonda, probably do something similar to that. Um, well, you're doing, what's your total hours? Would you I say? would say on the typical week, I'm probably exercising like 14 to 16 hours. Most of it's endurance. So I'll probably do 14 hours of endurance training and then, you know, getting in like one to two hours of, of strength training. I could probably veer more towards the, the strength training. But again, you know, it's as we talked about earlier, what I'm trying to optimize for <laughs> at this point in my life.